Uh, Minister, I welcome the launch of the National Participation Framework for Children and Young People's Participation in Decision Making last April. Can you tell me what is the status of this now? Thank you. Thanks uh, very much, Deputy. Well, the, the National Participation Framework for Children and Young People's Participation in Decision Making it was published in April last year. And it plays a vital role in ensuring that all children and young people are respected and listened to and that their views are taken on board routinely uh, in the public services that are offered to them. And the framework's implementation is actively supported by my department through the capacity building measures and training provided by Hub Nanog. And the Hub was established as a centre of excellence and coordination to drive and support children and young people's participation in decision making nationally. In 2021, phase one of a capacity building grant to train staff on the use of the framework was allocated to arts organisations, disability, homeless and traveller service providers, the youth justice sector and early learning and childcare services. And a key feature of this 1,500 euro grant, sorry, sorry, uh, 150,000 euro grant is that funded organisations also undertake training from Hub and Oak. And the training provides an understanding of the policy commitment to the voice of the child. And practitioners are provided with the tools that enable them to involve children and young people in decision making in their day to day um, services and activities. And in 2022, phase two of the capacity grant scheme will see sporting organisations and youth services included. So Hub Nanog also continues to engage bilaterally with government departments, agencies and key stakeholders and further methodologies for seldom heard children and younger children are being developed and Hub Nanog is also working with academic partners to develop an online training module. So again the vision for this framework it's participation with purpose and that's to ensure that when young people are involved in decision making their views are listened to their views are given due weight and with, uh, with the intention of influencing the outcome or initiating change. And the vision recognises our children as citizens of today and not just as adults of tomorrow. Thank you, um, <clears throat> thank you Minister. Um, this framework plays a vital role in supporting departments, agencies and organisations to improve their practice in listening to children and young people and to facilitate their voices to be heard in decision making. Children cannot be the priority minister if their needs and their concerns are not the voices that are being heard. This framework is underpinned by the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Persons with Disabilities and the National Strategy on Children and Young People's Participation in Decision Making. We know that children and young people need to have a meaningful voice in decision making, not least to help us better develop and evaluate evidence-based policies. Just this week when on Taoiseach I raised the issue of a child who needed a home adaptation grant because of a disability, they faced huge barriers because there's no policy on this. This was done through an adult occupational health where we should have had this assessed by a children's occupational therapist. And, and, and Minister, these are the barriers that we seem to be facing. We know, Minister, that children are not just small adults, they are developing human beings who deserve to be treated in every department with priority. Can you detail the progress on the implementation of the National Participation Framework for Children and Young People's participation in decision making since its announcement, particularly now it has been used across the government departments? Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks very much, Stephanie, and look, thanks, thanks for, your, for, your, for your own advocacy on, on, on these issues. Look, I think it, it is, there are very tangible examples of the youth participation framework acting to influence government policy. So when, when the uh, Climate Action Plan was, uh, was, was, uh, was being drafted, there was a, a youth participation strand in terms of getting the views of young people on that. Similarly, the youth justice uh, policy that was launched, uh, I think, in 2020, again, absolutely essential in terms of, uh, of, of, of of its application to young people and again young people were consulted in terms of the content of that. Just a very practical example as you know in this year's budget a new um, youth travel pass was announced to, to give a 50% reduction in fares for young people between 17 and, and, and 23. That was a result of advocacy from Corla Nanog. Corla Nanog, its national executive, agreed that that was its policy framework, its, its policy proposal. It engaged with me, I engaged with Minister Ryan and we, did, we brought forward that really, really positive uh, that, that really positive policy initiative. So again, that's an example of youth participation in action. Um, that's, that's welcome. And I th look, I do believe this framework um, gives a practical way for organisations and departments to engage with and hear the voice of the child. Everybody has a right to make their own choices and every effort must be made to support people whose capacity to make decisions is a challenge for children to have that right. They need decision makers who support them and who hear them. Specifically, 
what practical supports are being provided to decision makers to help them to develop capacity to meaningful engagement with young people and is there a plan to extend this and you know minister we've seen here this morning um, all the different um, members speaking about child poverty and homelessness and the school meals program where we have children that are actually hungry going to school i am aware of families being taken out of one or different schools to actually go to a school where we have the hot meals program and these are issues that seem to be getting worse so we have to make these issues a priority and we have to make sure that no children faces homelessness or no ch child is hungry thank you thanks very much Debbie. i suppose look the, the, the key practical uh, steps that we're taking is the provision of the uh, 150,000 grants that are available to a whole range of youth organisations to allow them uh, upskill and train their own members so that they can uh, increase their ability uh, to, to undertake youth participation. And I think you've you know, referenced a number of vulnerable groups and I think that's particularly important. That's the next step and that's something that Hope Nanog is really focusing on now at the moment, this idea of how do we not just listen to children but listen to traveller children or listen to very young children or listen to children with, with a disability to actually get those very distinct uh, takes, those very distinct views that may be different to, to I suppose, the, 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 average, the average child, the average young person, and make sure that those views are able to be fed into and influences processes or decisions, policies that are taken about those groups. Thanks, Deputy. Thanks, Minister. Our next